Hello again. It's time for another afternoon Ask Anything here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Channels. I'm Alex Dunf. That's Gerard Gilberto. Gerard, how's it going, man? Doing well, man. Doing well. It's good to have a just like it feels like we're doing baseball tonight today. You know, we're not going to be sitting here just staring at each other while, you know, somebody answers a question about the Penguins or the Steelers. No, no, they should not. Well, I don't want to speak for you. They should not ask me any Penguins questions. It will not go well. Right. It will not go well. I don't know. If it wasn't baseball, do you want to open this up to some other word things? Yeah. Like how, how are you handling, you know? We're smart guys. We, uh, we're, yeah. How are we're you good. handling post Knicks? I'm sorry? How are you handling the Knicks right now? Oh, I'm, I'm not sweating. Right. D Rose ain't sweating. I'm not sweating. All right. <laughs> We'll get formally started here in a little bit. This is my first time actually doing hosting any one of these. So I'm just making sure that this is all on all the social media channels before we get started so we can get everything that's on your guys' mind into this. Make sure there isn't a channel that we're not tapping into here. And it looks like we're good. So we're going to call this an official start here in a couple seconds in three, two, one. Good afternoon and welcome to the Ask Anything show here on DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network. My name is Alex Dump. That's Gerard Gilberto. We're going to have a whole lot of baseball talk this for the next half hour or so. If you have a question, uh, be sure to put it in a Facebook comment, into a YouTube comment. If you're on Twitter, you actually have to go to Periscope and make the comment in there. Um, but yeah, we're going to try to get to as many of these as you've got uh, going on. And this is, of course, brought to you by our friends at Mike's Beer Bar, which is located right across the street from PNC Park, right by the Willie Stargell statue on Federal Street. They've got 500 beers to choose from, 80 local ones on tap. It really is the best place to get a taste of Pittsburgh's beer scene. Would strongly recommend. If you haven't gone already, steak on a stone. We all love the place. Come on. <laughs> all right and uh i guess we're gonna get started here with josh who says can you define cash considerations what can that be used towards obviously no international pool money this year and yeah that's something that's popped up a couple times for the last point that josh brought up there that um before this year you could trade players for you know international money which is really just the right to spend more money internationally but Major League Baseball cut that off in 2021 because they wanted to make sure that, you know, you didn't have a team like what the Pirates did last year where they just acquired a bunch of space at the end of the year and that other teams weren't using. And they signed uh, Chen, who is basically like another second round draft pick, you know, quality wise as a player. So they don't want that in that mix. Yeah, cash considerations is cash. Like it's considerations is is not a. that that's a legal term, I guess you could call it, or, or just an unnecessary uh, modifier. To quote the great Dave Chappelle, straight cash, homie. Exactly. Uh, Parsons13 Chad asks, thoughts on how much Hayes will help out the rest of the lineup? Yeah, um, he's their best player. I, I, I know that it's been like, like not that much of a, you know, sample size, but I, there's not much more you need to see. Like he's their best hitter. He, it's it's they really do go from having two reliable bats in the in the lineup to three. Um, so they're I don't expect them to be you know let's say very very good now that he's back. But obviously he's going to help. It's going to they they're going to use the phrase he lengthens our lineup. He does this. He does that. No, it's just another guy that you know Adam Frazier's getting on base all these all these times and he's not scoring runs. Having Hayes behind them now is gonna is gonna they're gonna put more runs on the board. He's he's, he's a damn good hitter. Um, guy in front. Uh, he's probably gonna be batting second behind Frazier, right? So, you know, it's gonna be tough to pitch to those two guys at the top of the lineup. Yeah, and it's not only the rest of the lineup looking past Hayes because everything Gerard says. I mean, I can't add on to it. Um, I would look at shortstop because this year we've basically seen. Kevin Newman and Eric Gonzalez being the left side of the infield, which is as good defensively 
as you can get pretty much on the left side of the infield. I think it'd be hard pressed to be to find a lot of teams that are better than that. But offensively, they have just been terrible, both of them. Like batting averages, yeah. two fifteen, two fourteen, OPS in the five thirty range. That will simply not get it done. So yeah, not only does Hayes add a really good bat to the lineup, he takes away a bad bat from the lineup. <laughs> Yeah, Gonzalez is getting way too many at bats. Um, you know these guys are are made to be, you know, bench guys, and and you see what what you know, guy like Wilmer Defoe did when he was, you know, you get exposed a little bit when when you get too many chances and you're not you're just not that player. Um, great glove, good bat off the bench. You know, can spell a guy can spell a guy for a day or two, but yeah, he's not a guy that should be getting you know twenty at bats a week. There's nothing wrong with being a good Sunday starter. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with that. It, it's wrong whenever he has to play six times a week. Exactly. Uh, and he probably to... still does. He, as, you know, now it's a, a matter of who plays first base more because they're both right-handed. Uh, Will Craig or Eric Gonzalez for the, the next few days until uh, Moran and Evans get healthy. Yeah. Paul asks, before or after the All-Star break, do the Pirates just decide to go ahead and bring up Cruz and other players from the minors and play them? Uh, Cruz in particular, I mean, he just had a four hit game today. Yeah. Monster day today. Absolutely. Yeah. Monster day today. He's, he's red hot right now. He's hitting over 400 in last week. Um, like 11 RBIs, four home runs. Like, he's just a monster week. Watch that video. I, I tweeted it out. The Altoona curve tweeted it out. If you haven't of that home run today and where that pitch is located and so many young power hitters, they're going to try so hard to pull that. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to roll it to second base. No, he stayed with it, hit it out to left center. That's kind of what uh, Miguel Perez, you know, he and I talked about earlier this spring. Like, you know, Cruz knows there's a lot of eyes on him. And that can sometimes lead to pressure, trying to do too much at the plate. That was a great example of, no, I see the pitch. I'm going to hit it where it's at. And that doesn't mean, you know, you have to compromise power. He can still put it in the gap. He could still put it over the wall with it because this guy has insane raw power. But to answer Paul's question, definitely all star break if we see Cruz at some point this year. I think it's still a real possibility, even though he's still in Altoona right now. Yeah. Uh, the other thing they have to figure out, and it's it's something they're going to be talking about with this guy for the rest of his career because he's, you know, just how big he is and, and the type of athlete he is. Uh, as of a few days ago, he was almost leading the minor leagues in errors. Uh, having played exclusively at shortstop. Um, so that's something they're going to have to figure out before he gets a shot in, in the majors too is, you know, they've insisted on on trying him out at short, not at trying him out, they've, they've insisted on leaving him at shortstop. Um, and, you know, it's 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 tough to judge errors in the minor leagues a year after not having games and, and, and all that stuff. But, yeah, I, I, I think at least defensively he's going to, you know, he's, he's going to need a lot of time and I would, I guess, say, Post All Star break, maybe even post trade deadline. You know, a few weeks after. I think post trade deadline is a like good, good. Mm-hmm. Just circle it in. Someone's gonna get traded from that mix. It'll create an opportunity. <laughs> Rick asks: Has there been more emphasis on calling interference? And do most of these calls seem really ticky tacky? Rick, I don't know what the heck happened last night, man. That was as bad an interference call I have seen in a long time. Brian Reynolds did exactly what every hitter does in that situation of just slowly walking away from the plate to make sure he doesn't interfere with the play. And look at Salvador Perez just setting up right behind Reynolds going, oh, I can't make the play anymore. That that was ridiculous. I don't know if interference calls are up across the league, but, man, the parts have been burned by like four or five of them this year. Yeah, that one of the things that they really need to figure out between that and the uh, running in the baseline stuff, when, when there's a dribbler up the line and you put a throw on a guy's back, like that seems, I guess, inconsistent would be the most polite word. Uh, not, not the rule, but how it's enforced. Moving on. Uh, when Robert Fulton asks, when can we give Ben Gamble his ticket to another town? And you were right about Will Craig. He needs to go down. Well, I, I take no pleasure in being right about Will Craig right now, but I mean, yeah. There was a reason why this guy was designated for assignment last year. And Gamble's kind of been fine. Yeah, I got no problem with Ben Gamble right now. Um, yeah. I, I don't he, I don't see – they. Kai Tom's been getting a lot of at-bats since he came back, but I, I think Ben Gamble's 
the third best outfielder they have. And, and you know, especially with Swaggerty out now, it, it's not going to, it's not going to be like there's a, a young guy that's going to come take a spot from him. We were, he, Alex and I were joking, not joking, but we were uh, dumbfounded by the, the uh, what Blind Madras is doing in, in uh, Indianapolis. And, yeah. and, you know, that, that's something we're going to talk about all year. There's going to be opportunities in the outfield. Derek Shelton said it. Ben Sherrington said it. Uh, guys can can come up and, and earn a spot. And, you know, Alfred and, and uh, is, isn't doing it in AAA, but oh, Bly Madras, 25 years old. Yeah. Like, uh, is it just a, a name you've, you've heard a lot in, the, in, in Pirates Prospects, uh, you know, coverage in, in recent years? Yeah. Definitely been a staple within the system since he got that promotion to AAA. And, you know, yeah. he had that really good showing in Australia this winter, and he definitely has worked on his swing mechanics, and maybe he's tapped into something. Right. I don't know. I don't know. And Gamble's definitely not going anywhere if Tom is going to be on the IL again. We don't have that for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's after also being true. being hit by a pitch, we're going to get more info from that tomorrow whenever we talk to Tom Tomczyk. Greg Fennell asks, I think I saw Kranich was promoted. Yes, he was, to AAA. Why him before Ronzi? Um, there's familiarity there, for one thing. Not to say that's the only reason, but Hanrahan and Kranich have worked together since 2017 at different levels, whether it was at the alternate site last year whenever they were both coming into the system. That means something. I mean, Pirates, even though the scouts obviously really like Contreras, so that's why they ended up trading for him. Uh, for the coaches in here, in the system, he's new. They're still getting to know him, still getting to see how he responded, and that's why something like yesterday's start was so important, where two starts ago he got hit around a little bit. It was okay, how does this guy respond? And he tosses six shutout innings, strikes out how many batters? Seven? It was Eight. eight. Yeah, eight batters, and you know it's like he, he never missed a beat. He just got right back in stride. We'll right. see Contreras at AAA soon enough, especially if the Yuhari injury is serious enough, because DeYoung's already up in the majors. That's one. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't see any AAA though. If you send send Contreras down to Bradenton for three weeks, it's not going to make a difference. You know, I, I don't know that, especially in twenty twenty one with these guys, I don't know that it really matters. I think the only thing that matters is that every. Tuesday, which is, you know, the new thing in the minors that uh, uh, once a week, Ron Z Contreras and, and these guys and Quinn Priester is just are just physically on a mound throwing a baseball against, um, you know, other minor leaguers. It, it doesn't matter. It could stick them on Mars. Really, it's not going to make a difference in 2021. Yeah, I don't know. Contreras is at the point that I want yeah. him to be challenged, though. I want him to face, you know, the highest that he can. I wouldn't be – I know you can't do it, but if for some reason he was up in the major leagues and he was making Thursday start or next Tuesday start, whatever, it'd be like, you know what, Let, let's see how the kid does. Let's see how he responds. But he's obviously not quite ready for that. But I'd like I, to see him face that next level because at double A, I don't know how much more he has to prove. Yeah, I, I think – what he has to prove is not about the competition. It's about, I think the challenge right now is seeing him not miss a start for three months, you know, and, and, and just, you know, go from start to start. Like you said, bounce back from a, from a bad start like that, a, a little, just consistency, no matter where it is, I think is, is the challenge there. Um, yeah. Uh, as far as talent, uh, it's undeniable, you know, just based on what he's done and, so I think he could be pretty good as a Triple A starter right now. Yeah, absolutely. But I I have no problem with you know, just letting him get his work in at that level and let him be dominant. Sheridan Learn asks: Will Crow looks like a long term bullpen option rather than a starter? Do you agree? You see him moving there after JT returns. I I threw this in the live file last night that you know. There is definitely some stuff with Will Crow. It's not like he's just, you know, this jabroni, what are you doing here, whatever. No, there's definitely some stuff. We've seen the fastball tick up in velocity every once in a while, definitely up in spin. You know, slider can tunnel well off of the stuff, but he does miss his location more times than you would want from a starting pitcher. And I don't know how the Pirates can 
realistically cut down on that other than reducing the sample size and moving them to the bullpen where it's like, you're not going to, you know, make a mistake on your 60th pitch of the game because you won't throw 60 pitches. <laughs> I, I, I yeah, think he could a, work out of the bullpen. Yeah. That was his role on opening day when everybody was healthy. Right. Um, I mean, that and, was, uh, yeah, he, that was just giving him the spot on the roster. No. Yeah, exactly. But you know, it's, it's something that they're willing to try. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I think at this point now you get, you get cool back, uh, the young's getting his chances. Um, uh, I, I have no problem with that, with that plan, especially if, if they're going to be so gun shy about Luis Oviedo, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, you know, you have nine relievers, but you're only going to use eight and then one of them's a closer. And so you, you're taking up all this, this space on the roster for these guys so yeah let them i i got no problem moving them to the bullpen um yeah Yeah. and who knows what happens when the other rule five pick jose soriano is activated activated off the il because the pirates are building him up like he's a starter so maybe the pirates do like piggyback things maybe that's just a tactic so oh you know jose soriano needs more time you know the rehab in the minors you know minimize exactly that that's the, bringing in a rule, another rule five guy yeah that's the sleight of hand that they'll use to convince them to agree to another uh 30 days <laughs> josh asks what type of return would fraser and rich rod bring in if they trade him i don't want them to but jordan i'm gonna let you lead off here <laughs> Uh, I don't know that they're going to get anything tremendous because I don't think that, uh, teams are inclined to trade their top prospects anymore. Um, it, it, like, I, this Nolan Arenado trade was, was proof of that. Um, I don't think we can cite Arenado for anything other than just a team bumbling and bungling, you know, well, superstar talent. But again, and teams aren't going to trade the top guys, especially not for, yeah. Uh, I I would think what what you want. So somebody brought this up to me last week in the uh, live cues that the the Mets had all those injuries, blah blah blah. That's not the type of team you want to make a deal with right now. You want to make a deal with a team that's going to use these guys in the same roles that they're in now, because that is their maximum value. You want somebody that's going to stick Adam Frazier in at second base and have him lead off every day. Rich Rod, do you want some, you know, at least the, the eighth inning or, or, you know, if he's not going to be the closer? So that's the, that's the way to maximize the return. I think, um, I don't know. I, I'm going to say if you look at a team's top 30, you're going to you're gonna see a lot of those between 8 and 15 in the rankings. That Those are the type of guys that they'd probably get back. Yeah, and I mean, I think the best example – of what Gerard was saying about teams aren't trading their top prospects anymore is look at Marte because the pirates I know did have an offer where they could have gotten a a top 100 catcher or top 100 prospect who was a catcher, but they chose Pagaro and Malone that package instead, because they thought, okay, these guys will have to be developed a little bit, but we're going to get two 100 top 100 guys this way. Instead, two guys who are going to make a real impact on it. And that's kind of the way that we've seen Ben Charrington lead on these deals. You know, he got Hudson head and a bigger return of secondary players in the Joe Musgrove trade, rather than insisting on a top 100 guy, because teams don't want to trade that right now. So what would they bring back? I think Rich Rod looked to like the Keller trade as a, as a good template where they got, or the Rangers got from the Pirates, uh, Taylor Hearn, you know, this guy who was like 15th on the teams, on their Pirates' top 30 prospects. But He, was, know, like a, a, he was, I remember Taylor Hearn when I was covering the minors. He was a top 10 guy for them. He was top 10? All right, so I'm yeah. sorry, 10. 10 yeah. right, but like a 45-type grade pitcher exactly. and like a secondary <laughs> piece. Frazier, because of one year less control, probably ballpark, and it would be somewhere close to there, too. Yeah, Taylor Hearn's ranking was was had more to do with the pirate system than it had to do with Taylor Hearn. Taylor yeah. Hearn was a pretty good prospect too. Was Not saying prospect. that's great, but yeah. you know. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back in thirty seconds. 
At DK Pittsburgh Sports, we take pride in coverage that connects our city's fans to their favorite teams. Now, that connection's stronger than ever. Introducing our all-new state-of-the-art app. Find expert inside reporting and original podcasts. Check live box scores. Track the latest stats. Chat it up with our community of thousands of fans, all in one place. The new app from DK Pittsburgh Sports. Coverage that connects. And welcome back. We are continuing here on the Afternoon Ask Anything show brought to you by our friends at Mike's Beer Bar. Uh, we got a lot to go through here. Uh, <laughs> David Bernicke asks, I saw reports about Yahure dealing with arm troubles right now. It is considered right elbow discomfort at the moment. We're going to get more details tomorrow. The Pirates are still getting more details on it right now. It's still being evaluated. It's the very early stages. But you heard he's already a Tommy John survivor. Anything elbow related is definitely a cause for concern. Yeah, he was just uh, IL today in Indianapolis, which is yes. seven days uh, in the minors. So it could be a week, could be more. We, we'll find out. We'll talk to, to Todd tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Greg Haas asks, huge fan of minor league baseball. Do the Pirates ever look to independent, non-affiliated leagues for players? Um, recent example. Uh, first of all, yes, they do. A recent example would be Chase DeYoung, who was someone who was pitching for the Sugarland Skeeters of an independent league uh, last year. And the Pirates were one of two teams that were really interested in him. They ended up losing out on the bidding to the Astros. But, you know, second time around, they got him. DeYoung looked good. I'm not saying, you know, anything amazing. But whenever Charrington says, you know, we're going to give him some runway, we're going to give him an opportunity in the majors, whether that's starting, relieving, whatever – Seems justified. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, these, there's obviously more independent league teams now, so it's gonna it's gonna be inevitable. Uh, they're obviously they're not gonna have to fill seven rosters or whatever it is. Um, they're only gonna really have to fill four plus one with with the the GCL. Um, so it's gonna be interesting this year to see if if they they do pluck someone out of a, like a like a present independent league player um, and and give them a shot in the minors. But uh, yeah. It's definitely a thing. This seems like a good yes, no, move on question here. <laughs> Paul asks, is it me or does the, or do the Pirates have a black cloud over them more than other teams? From bad calls, bad plays, injuries, I am thinking that other teams just don't have these many issues. Yes or no, Gerard? I covered the Mets, man. This is <laughs> – <laughs> This isn't different. Like this, this just happens to teams. Um, yeah. No, I, I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but it's not exclusive. Yeah. yeah. It's it's know. it's tough to shake, man. It just teams. It just happens. We needed to get someone from like the Minnesota beat or something here. The Mets is the wrong barometer to base. Yeah, this really. Off. Yeah. No, I. <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, I'm familiar with exactly what you're talking about, Paul. Um, but uh, or Paulski, this Paul, that fam, first name, family name, whatever. Mister Five Cents, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it is it is not exclusive. Um, I from you know talking to my old friends on the beat and and all you know friends back home, the the change of ownership seemed to, uh, um, you know change their fortune you know, a little bit, but then they had 17 guys on the IL. So, no, it doesn't go away sometimes. Mark Petro asks, do you really believe that this is a true rebuild or do you think they are feeding us the same old BS? And I'm going to say yes, I do believe this is a true rebuild. They prefer to just say build, but they finally relented and say, if you want to call it a rebuild, call it a rebuild. Um, I compare it to like, the Dave Littlefield is forever because that's who I grew up. That was the general manager. Whenever I started getting into baseball, that was the Pirates GM. And that's always going to be like my barometer. That was the guy who is in the feeding us the same old BS. That's Dave Littlefield talking. This is definitely not the same way that they're approaching with that. They have a, a real approach. It is all about player development, which is the way that the Pirates are going to have to improve. And we're seeing some guys, take steps already in the first month of the minor league season. We're going to continue to see it as the year progresses. There are encouraging signs going on in the farm system. 
Yeah, and it's not. This isn't all. This isn't based on messaging that it's a rebuild. It's, this is based on what they're actually doing. Um, this has worked before for other teams, and this is uh, not something that the Pirates have, have tried in you know, sort of jumping in the deep end with both feet here. So, yeah, it's it's not about them telling us that us meaning me and you, Alex, that they're rebuilding. It's about them physically doing the things that a rebuilding team is doing. Would do, rather. George has a couple here on Gregory Polanco. Uh, Gregory Polanco is in another Gregory Polanco rut here, Gerard. And I don't know, however, how else to put it. So I, what do you do with Polanco here? Because he's not coming back in 2022. Yeah, you're also not going to trade him, and you also don't have a third outfielder to replace him with. So you're just going to let him out there and get, take his punches. He'll, he'll have his his uh, you know his stretches where he'll, he'll see the ball a little better. He'll figure it out a little better. But it's it it's not nothing's happening. With him. You're not going to get anything out of DFA in him. You're not you're not going to have any you know body come and take his place. You're not going to exercise the option at the end of the year. So at, at, at right now it's. He's their second best outfielder, and it's not even really close. Um, I like Tom. <laughs> you like, I like Tom? Tom more? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know about that. I uh, I don't yeah, know if I, I'm gonna die on the hill, but I like Tom. Yeah, it's true. Um, okay, so you'll you'll agree that there's a precipitous drop off after Brian Reynolds, regardless. Yes. Yes, <laughs> I will. Okay. Um. Yeah. He he's a guy. You know what I I think is is uh. Is an important. This is just based off things that you know. Rick Eckstein has has said. Derek Shelton has said in terms of just how to modify a swing for a guy that they say long levers, all that stuff. Um, if they could figure out anything with Gregor Polanco, it would help them tremendously in with O'Neill Cruz because it's a similar body type with just the long, long levers, as they say, arms and legs. Uh, and, and the same phrasing that they use for uh, uh, Cruz, they use for Polanco, it's that ability to impact the baseball, meaning they can hit the ball far sometimes. Uh, so I, I, I think you got to let Rick work with Greg uh, as much as he can. Yeah. And that's, again, not to go back to just one swing of the bat, what makes Cruz home run today so encouraging from that point that, you know, he's like, okay, it's something on the outer part of the plate. I'm going to go with it. Right. Richard Deal asks, 60 days, <laughs> IL is up for Brault. Any idea when we could expect his return? Uh, there's no deadline for when he does have to come back. Last we got, uh, he was getting up to 120 feet throwing, which is like the last step of long toss. Next should be actually getting back on the mound. We don't have a firm timetable yet for when it's going to be, but it's still going to be at least a couple more weeks, probably not until July. Yeah, I... I would say post All Star break because you talk about building a guy up as a starter. Um, we're we're going to see how long that takes. Now, um, they they weren't as patient with. Obviously, it's a different injury, but in terms of building a guy up as a starter, that doesn't always mean the same things. That might mean up to four innings, not necessarily up to eighty pitches, um, whatever that is. Gerard, this one I'm going to leave completely to you, Mister. <laughs> used to work for milb.com. What are some of your favorite minor league parks? <clears throat> okay. Um, so of the ones I've been to, I'm a fan of uh, Hartford, which is uh, the Dunkin' Donuts Park. You'll notice a lot of these are in the Northeast because it, there wasn't a tremendous travel budget uh, for a minor league baseball website. Shock, I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I really like Hartford and uh, Portland. Portland is 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 fun because it's they have like a like a makeshift green monster out there and and uh, it it was like so very minor leaguey that like the the clubhouses are in the um, attached uh, basketball arena where the the Celtics GCL team plays the I want to say Red Claws but like the logo's a little lobster so it's funny like both teams got to walk off to the um, <laughs> that 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 was funny. Um, and I got to uh, I got to give them credit, man. The the Jersey Shore Blue Claws, as they're known now, uh, they used to be called Lakewood. The Phillies uh, 
formerly South Atlantic League team, whatever it is now, uh, High A East, whatever. Um, they they did the shore right. They they did it right. So you know, fun like little boardwalk type games and stuff like that. So that that was enjoyable. And just as far as like pictures of parks that I've seen, because you know you you have to deal with a lot of photos. Charlotte might rival PNC Park in terms of the view. Ooh. Yeah, it's a it's a cool it's a cool view. Like, and that's yeah. There's no river, but it's right in, in like a little metropolitan area. Buildings right overlooking the uh, the outfield fence. So that one that one's a pretty cool place. Which is is it Quad Cities? It's <clears throat> right on the river. In the bridge, a lot of a lot of right on rivers. Like you'll yeah. realize after a while, like once you cover minor leagues for a little bit, that pretty much every American city is built around the body of water. Like you could do river something. Like the team in Beloit, which is now the uh, which was among like like the minor leaguers, that would always be their go to example of like this crappy minor league city with like bad facilities and stuff like that. They got a you know they got some billionaire funding and and they're. <laughs> They're, they're building a new park, but that was right on a river, like literally the border of Wisconsin and Illinois. Uh, they were, there's, there's a guy on Twitter and I got to give him credit because he's, he's tenacious about it. Really wants them to name the team, the river rockers because it's on rock river, you know, cute, but every single team has a river, something like <laughs> it's ev everything has river in, in their name, the river bandits. River, yeah. Um, so, I doubt it's going to be the River Rockers. <laughs> yeah, and Harrisburg apparently is pretty cool with the little island. They get the yeah. I haven't been to Harrisburg's yet. Yeah, I, I didn't know about the island until you brought it up. Whenever you know, the curve went out there, and I couldn't watch it on TV because it wasn't on MIL. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, we're running close to the end of time here. We got time for a couple more here. Josh wants me to answer for my. For me saying that I, I kind of liked hey, Tom. And, you know, yeah, first thing Josh says is, sure, he walks, but that's about it. Well, two parts of that. Yes, he does walk. It gets on base. 380 Good swing decisions. Yeah. A.K.A. he sees a ton of pitches, which is the second point I was going to make. He's a pesky at bat. It doesn't really seem like there are a lot of one or two pitch outs with him. And I, I, I don't know if he's going to keep going with a 380 OBP that I really don't care what the slugging percentage is. And defense, he definitely got off on a rocky foot, but he's been fine after those first couple games. Yeah. I Again, agree. not willing to die on the hill, but you know, <laughs> I, I think he's the second best major league outfielder that the Pirates have fielded this year, which – They've done what nine at this point, eight or nine at least. Uh, well, it depends on what you consider an outfielder. I think our definition of an outfielder and Ben Sherrington's are a little different. Wilmer Defoe is a is an outfielder in the latter. Eldemero Vargas. In, they finally caved and called him an infielder when they announced the trade today. This doesn't count, but David said, "How did Sherrington get anything <laughs> for Mister Vargas?" So Eldemero Vargas had like a fifty game hitting streak when he was in. Uh, I want to say Reno when he was in Triple A with the with the Diamondbacks a couple years back. So that was like every day was Ildemero Vargas Day uh, at MILB.com, and it was it was wild. It was like that Luis Castillo from the Marlins hitting streak a few years back when he was like, well, he got an infield single in his first at bat and went one for five. So hitting streak continues. Josh calls me a young Brad Pitt. In Moneyball, with the he gets on baseline, or basically Brad Pitt. There you go. I'll it's go with the young Brad Pitt. I'm, yeah, basically Brad Pitt. Yeah, he's really basically not, not much of a difference here. No, no. I'm a little better looking. And we're going to finish off here with Parsons. I don't, did Parsons bet lead off for us too? No, he bet, he was in the two hole. He was in the new Ben Gamble spot. <laughs> Going to be the Hayes spot a little bit. But Eddie Parts jersey safe to buy. Yes, his name is. Is Cabrian Hayes? Uh, hard Roberto mode. Roberto Clemente. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Stargell. <laughs> hard mode. Three Pirates jerseys besides Hayes that you would feel safe buying right now. Uh, on on the present roster. Yes. I would not say Brian Reynolds. No. Oh. Um. 
Gee, I don't know. I really I don't mean, know. All right, here's some. I'll admit something right now, and it's going to okay. be very embarrassing for me. I'm snake bitten by this. Not snake bitten. I've 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 learned my lesson from the Ty Law jet jersey that I bought when I was a young when I was a young uh, young kid. So yeah, I don't I don't have a ton of yeah. I like Ty Law. I I was you know played cornerback. Guy was like my favorite player. He got to the Jets. I'm like hell yeah, Ty Law. That's also when jerseys were like fifty bucks and they weren't, you know, three hundred dollar <laughs> uh, articles. Robert Fulton says Dave Parker, uh, Hayes, Reynolds, and get a David Bednar Mars jersey. Mars should start should start selling those. That's a that's a good one. I like Bednar. I like the Bednar. He's gonna be here for a minute. Yeah, and you know what? Maybe they'll get a second Bednar. Although that guy shouldn't last in the second round, but if he does, you know. Need you two on again. We will be on again at some point. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you're catching this on a podcast, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcast to DK Pittsburgh Sports Podcasting Network. Uh, check out Mike's Beer Bar. Get a beer. Mention my name. You won't get a discount or anything, but they'll be like, okay, that's cool. I, yeah, I absolutely. That's how I go. That's what I do every time I go. It doesn't work at every business, but it does work at Mike's. Exactly. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll do this again soon.